So the, the sleep hygiene piece is always uh, an interesting one to talking about um, because I start feeling like I'm somebody's parents telling them to go to sleep. And so when listening to this, I would kind of suggest instead of thinking, oh, I have to do all of these things in order to have good sleep, uh, think about, you know, okay, what are like one or two things that I can reasonably do with my schedule um, and, you know, everything that I know about myself that I can actually do. The biggest key is to establish a regular routine for going to sleep <laughs> and even maintaining it as best you can uh, during the weekends and on vacations. Um, the environment is really important. So for your bed, you know, make sure you have a good quality bed. Um, don't have too much light. Um, actually have it, your bedroom be dark. So then when you go in, it has this kind of subdued, you know, kind of sleep evoking feeling. And keep TV out of the bedroom. That's, that's a, an important one. Um, and, uh, you know, have it be a good temperature, ventilation, and uh, kind of jumping around here a little bit, um, having a hot shower or bath can be helpful um, before you go to bed. Um, and sometimes a, a light snack, even though you don't want to have like large meals, sometimes having a small stack, a snack can be, can be helpful. And um, again, it's, it's about quality, not quantity. You know, sometimes people have like a, a, a number of hours that they, you know, really, you know, I really want to be, you know, having eight hours. Well, you know, it's, sometimes it's, it's more about, um, you know, how, how you feel during the day. Um, if you feel rested, then how, the number of hours. You know, if you are unable to fall asleep, and this is again, just a strategy. So if something's working for you, use it. Um, but if you're unable to fall asleep after that 15 or 20 minutes, if you go into another room and do kind of a quiet activity, you know, whether it's um, like reading, and, um, and wait till you start to feel tired and then go back to your bedroom, you know, which is this kind of sleep haven, and then try to go to sleep again. That can be better than kind of tossing and turning for, um, you know, for an hour or two, which, some t which people do. So the, the don'ts, no caffeine or alcohol, four to six hours before bed. It, it might seem obvious, but sometimes people are you know, surprised. Oh, is that why I'm not sleeping? Because I am you know, having my Turkish coffee after dinner. <laughs> you know? Drinking fluids before bed, uh, if you um, refrain from that, you, you might not have to wake up at night to use the bathroom. Exercising within three hours before bed, you know, exercise kind of um, pumps up those, those hormones um, and, uh, and gives you energy. And so doing that, you know, before bed kind of, again, kind of throws off those cycles. Um, and we've already talked about the meals and avoiding stress. Um, if uh, a lot of people do take naps after work, either in the evening or, um, or in the, the afternoon, <laughs> I'm seeing some staring. <laughs> um, it, that can also help uh, um, kind of switch around those, those cycles. So if you do take a nap, the best time to take a nap is right around noon, and that can actually reinforce the, the sleeping at night, um, and, and really no more than 20 minutes. Um, and trying not to rely on, on medicine uh, can definitely help. And, and uh, the suggestion of unplugging uh, you know, one hour before uh, bed can, can sometimes really help. Um, and here are some other just very simple things you can do to improve your energy, and you have these in your, in your packets. Um, and then I just wanted to take a moment to, to um, mention the, the Epworth test, which is a very simple questionnaire about sleepiness during the day. And this is something that you guys can do right now. It's basically a scale from zero to three of your chance of dozing off during certain activities. And some of you may have already done this you know, with a, a, a practitioner. Um, and there's a, you know, a series of questions. Um, you know, do you get sleepy or do, doze off while sitting and reading? Um, or while watching TV, sitting in a public place, um, in a, as a passenger in a car for an hour without a break, um, lying down to rest in the afternoon, sitting and talking with someone, um, sitting quietly after a lunch without alcohol, and uh, in a car while stopped for a few minutes at a traffic light. And if you rate each one of these with um, your chance of dozing off, and you actually have a score of 10 or greater, um, this actually puts you at risk for, um, for sleep apnea, for obstructive sleep apnea, which is the most common type. And, um, and, 
And uh, as Dr. Gary had said, this is kind of a, a part of a, a larger problem that you, you know, continue having this you know, sleep apnea and it can have, uh, you know, actually cause a center, central sensitization, you know, have an effect on your um, central nervous system. Um, and, and continue uh, with the symptoms of, of pain or uh, depression, anxiety. Um, so it's important to seek medical advice if you, if you do um, have a score of 10 or greater. So and just to re review what we have uh, just talked about, you know, a third of Americans do have sleep problems. Um, Chinese medicine offers a holistic approach to care. As you can see, um, it's not just about the, the symptoms, but it's about what else is going on in the body. Um, and, um, and acupuncture is a non-pharmaceutical option for treatment. Um, and, I, and Chinese herbs can also be very helpful, even in the short term, to help kind of uh, regulate those sleep cycles. And, uh, and then the lifestyle changes, I can't really reinforce enough. Um, the, the effect, uh, you know, you don't have to go to any practitioner's office to do those. At this point, we can do the, the demo, and I'll, I'll basically talk you through a typical treatment. And, you know, if you've never had acupuncture, what you can expect. So basically, um, when I, you know, first meet a patient, we'll kind of go through a pretty um, uh, thorough intake. Um, he, you know, here we, I usually take about an hour and a half with the first visit um, and go through not only the chief complaint but also uh, you know everything else that's going on. Um, and so Lenita, you can hop up here. And Lenita and I did chat beforehand and, and she's been really uh, wonderful because she really uh, offered herself and her, you know, uh, her sleep problems um, that, that we could discuss um, kind of in a, a general way. She has a pretty active dream life and, um, and sometimes, you know, when she's trying to fall asleep, um, you know, she has like, a, you know, just a lot of thoughts and um, if I know Lenita well, I would assume that it's kind of like a uh, a sci-fi channel kind of on loop. <laughs> Very creative person we have here. Um, and so, you know, it's not really so much like a worry or a stress, it's more of the, the, um, the heart and spleen deficiency um, that I had mentioned that um, is more about, um, yeah, it, it's, it's the, uh, you know, kind of on the anemic spectrum um, pattern. So, um, so you can go ahead and, and, uh, and lay down and uh, the the needles that I, I uh, brought <laughs> um, you can see they have a, a red handle on them um, I normally use um, Chinese needles which have um, a silver handle on them but for the demo I thought it would be a little better for you guys to actually be able to see the needle um, so I'm using a, a Japanese needle and the difference is that it's a little bit sharper and it has a, a coating because the Japanese needles are usually more superficial so you know if it, it's somebody's first time I'll explain that um, with you know with the acupuncture you might feel the needle going in it might be like a little prick you know almost like a mosquito bite um, and um, the important thing is um, the uh, there's a secondary sensation. So after that, and the needle and initially goes in, there's a, another feeling, and um, it's called da qi, d e q i, um, or just a, a qi sensation is usually what I explain to people. And um, it could be anything like a, a dullness, a heaviness in the area. Um, there could be some moving either in the local area where the needle is or even somewhere else in the body. Um, it could be kind of like a, a tingling. Um, sometimes they can be pr pretty intense in the first couple seconds and then usually they, they fade away. Um, and uh, but in general, um, it, it, there shouldn't be any really sharp pain or um, or burning pain. And if people do feel that, you know, you tell me, and I'll just take out the needle. Um, so uh, so I mentioned that um, for for Lenita, um, we're going to be doing kind of a, a blood deficiency, um, spleen deficiency um, treatment. Um, and so I'm gonna pick just a, a couple points that are, are typical for that. And um, one of the reasons why I don't use these regularly is because they're individually wrapped. And, um, and uh, if you have, um, 
Um, if you've never seen a, an acupuncture needle, I uh, encourage you to come up to me after the, the talk and, and, uh, and see it because um, it's actually, I mean, it's, it's, you're not even going to be able to see this across the room, um, but it's so hair you know, thin, um, you can even um, push it back and forth. Um, it's a, like a little bit thicker than like a cat's whisker. Um, and uh, so please come up to me afterwards and I, I can show you the, the needles. Okay, so the first um, point I'm gonna do is down by the, the ankles. And this is a really great, it's called Spleen 6. Um, and it's, uh, Usually for people who um, need this point, um, there's a, like a little bit of a depression, a cave, and, and Lenita does have it. So, okay, so you're gonna feel that? You feel it going in? Okay, and so now there's a, we're gonna feel for that secondary sensation. Do you feel anything there? Not yet? Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put in the rest of these points. What's that? I did not feel it. You start to feel it now? Okay. And what are you feeling? Mm -hmm. like a trickle. A little, a trickle? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's not painful at all. Okay. A tickle. A tickle. Yeah. So the next point I'm gonna do is called stomach 36 and again right now I'm just kind of building up her system because you know there's a deficiency and this one is actually sometimes a stronger point did you feel anything there uh, sorry I'm gonna grab my needles here and um, I might use um, some uh, some ear points um, which, uh, here I'll use this one. The ear points are really great for like calming points, um, uh, kind of uh, um, just in, in general, uh, like mood. Um, there, there's points on the ear for all over the body, but um, they're probably most well known for, um, for treating uh, PTSD um, or doing s like smoking cessation or like uh, for, for detoxing from drugs. Um, but in, in this case, it's just uh, a calming point. And this one is called uh, Shen Men. And uh, I'm using a, the guide tube on these just because these points are really uh, thin and that's that plastic tube. Um, but you can freehand these needles as, as well. Um, so the, the last point I'll do, and let's see, um, I'm trying to figure out how to do this so you guys can see, um, is a point behind the, um, the ear and uh, it's called an mien, which is uh, a, a sleep point. And you can find it on yourself. Basically, if you put your finger right behind your ear, kind of uh, behind the earlobe, there's kind of the, uh, the hole back there, right? Um, and so if you run your finger um, kind of, oh, here's my, getting stuck in my earring, um, uh, kind of back, towards the back of your head along the base of the skull, there's that, that muscle right there. It's you know, a big bulging muscle, and that's your SCM. And you basically want to go right into the belly of that, uh, of that muscle that's right there. Does, has everybody found it? And it's usually a little tender on people, um, and, and that's basically the point. And you can, you can kind of push on it and make like small circles. Um, and sometimes I tell people to do this before they go to sleep. Um, and uh, especially if they get a, a benefit from the point itself. Um, so I'll, you might not be able to, to see it, um, but I'm gonna locate it on her. And go with the needle, this can sometimes be a little intense if the person has a, um, a lot of muscle back there. And uh, so normally I might do, you know, uh, some different points on the different sides, but um, uh, I wanted to make sure you guys can see that over there. So how are you feeling? I feel good. You feel good? Yeah. Yeah? How is it? How does it feel good? She says she does not know. <laughs> it's 
pretty awesome, though. <laughs> she says it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Great. Thank you guys so much for, for coming out. And um, certainly, if you have individual questions, feel free to approach me after the talk. Um, it was really a pleasure to be with you tonight.